Hi, today we'll be going through the first set of uh, gastroenterology and hepatology related approaches. We'll be covering abdominal pain, dysphagia, diarrhea, and constipation. So abdominal pain is a symptom that we see frequently in our day-to-day -day practice. Um, I think for the purposes of the PACES exam, it's important to uh, be able to think of secondary etiologies to common diagnosis, uh, as well as some of the less common diagnoses that we don't see so frequently in our day-to-day -day practice. Um, I find uh, looking at whether uh, the abdominal pain is persistent or intermittent uh, or episodic a helpful uh, distinguishing factor. So for intermittent or episodic abdominal pain, think of the different colleagues, so biliary, renal, constipation, gut claudication, and some of the renal conditions such as uh, inter acute intermittent porphyria, hereditary angioedema, as well as familial Mediterranean fever. If there's associated dark urine, um, then differentials would one would think about could be hematuria from nutrient colic, biliary uh, obstruction due to increased uh, uh, bilirubin in the urine, as well as uh, acute intermittent porphyria where there is a uh, heme deposition in the urine. Um, other important features would be the site of pain as well as associated symptoms, which brings us to uh, the next slide. So in this uh, slide, we see that the causes of abdominal pain are, are multi-systemic. Uh, so for a uh, hepatobiliary system, uh, important pieces of information in history would be that of uh, jaundice, dark urine, pale stools. Um, when one thinks of stone disease, it's important to consider uh, secondary underlying etiology such as chronic hemolytic anemias, uh, thalassemia in our local context. Um, in terms of GI causes, uh, peptic ulcer disease, uh, and some of the other surgical causes are important to think about. So once again, secondary causes in the context of PUD, one might think of uh, men's syndrome with a hypergastrin uh, gastrinemia. Um, peritoneal causes, peritonitis, uh, can be surgical, or in the context of familial Mediterranean fever, the abdominal pain can be quite peritonitic sounding. Um, going through urological causes, uh, where stones can form. Uh, once again, secondary causes such as hypercalcemia with urethric colic uh, would be something that one could entertain as a differential. Uh, gynae causes uh, are not very common, but important to consider. And vascular causes are important not to be excluded. So vasculitis uh, or someone with uh, gut claudication for underlying atrial fibrillation uh, would be a differential to entertain if, let's say, uh, the abdominal pain is uh, intermittent and has association with meals. Um, for completeness sake, uh, the spleen uh, is, an organ, uh, is an organ to consider and referred pain from um, some of the other organs. Systemic causes are important uh, and causes such as hypercalcemia, porphyria, DTA, adrenal insufficiency, uh, familial Mediterranean fever, sickle cell, uh, mainly in the, in the UK context, and hereditary angioedema are uh, important conditions to read around. So next, we talk about dysphagia. So dysphagia can be, uh, can be approached from whether it's uh, an oral pharyngeal problem where initiation is usually uh, the, the problem that patients face or whether it's the esophageal cause of dysphagia where the foot uh, feels uh, as though it's getting stuck. Uh, for esophageal, it can either be mechanical where it's normally more solid foods uh, versus if, when it's functional where it's liquids that are predominantly affected first. And associations to look out for would be choking, regurgitation, pain that may, that may suggest esophagitis and dryness uh, in Sjogren's syndrome. Complications could include that of aspiration and malnutrition. So in terms of uh, looking at the different differentials for all pharyngeal mechanical causes or previous head and neck uh, tumors with RT uh, or any masses in the neck can cause a uh, mechanical cause of oral pharyngeal dysphagia. Uh, if it's functional, then a whole host of neurological uh, causes uh, can cause a either um, bulbar or pseudobulbar uh, palsy with oral pharyngeal dysfunction. For esophageal causes, uh, once again, for mechanical uh, malignancies, uh, need to be excluded. Strictures can be secondary to reflux, radiation, eosinophilic uh, esophagitis, or Crohn's disease. Uh, that's an important uh, differential to consider. Idle hernias are also common causes of uh, mechanical esophageal dysphagia, and webs and rings can occur in conditions like uh, Palmer Vincent syndrome. Uh, functional esophageal dysphagia can happen in achalasia or in scleroderma, and that's an important condition to consider. 
uh, gynas uh, can mimic dysphagia of sorts, uh, and this can happen in children. Uh, not to forget the esophagitis group of conditions, so candida in a patient who is immunocompromised, especially HIV, uh, GERD with various esophagus, uh, as well as uh, drugs such as bisphosphonates, uh, RT and caustic ingestions uh, can cause esophagitis. So we next move on to the next approach of diarrhea. Uh, once again, this is something that we see commonly. We can approach it from whether it's acute or chronic, bloody or non-bloody. Important risk factors not to miss out in history taking would be travel uh, and whether or not there's any risk factors for uh, an immunocompromised host, be it retroviral disease uh, or uh, immunosuppressive medication. And it's also important to make sure that diarrhea is not due to incontinence. So I think of it in terms of whether it's a GI or systemic, and for the GI causes, I think of it of whether it's non-inflammatory or inflammatory. For non-inflammatory causes, um, infections such as uh, just one of the mild gastroenteritis, uh, SIBO from scleroderma, uh, C. diff, or uh, importantly, opportunistic infections in the context of HIV, uh, where there are multiple causes. Uh, secretory diarrhea can occur in uh, villus adenoma or vipoma that can be associated with men's syndrome. Uh, male absorptions from lactose intolerance, uh, celiac if you are doing the um, UK exam, uh, pancreatitis or short gut syndrome. And uh, malignancy can cause uh, either overflow diarrhea or lymphoma itself can cause uh, diarrhea inherently and functional causes such as IBS. For the inflammatory causes, I think there are a few big groups to consider. Number one, inflammatory. So IBD is a big group. Uh, along with the inflammatory group would be lupus gut, uh, ischemic, um, previous radiation and infection, so bacterial infections uh, such as Shigella, E. coli, and sometimes the viral and fungal causes can also cause an inflammatory picture that can uh, present with a bloody mucoid uh, diarrhea. The systemic causes are also important, especially in the cases station 5 exam, hyperthyroidism, uh, drugs, uh, carcinoid is something to think about. Vipoma and gastrinomas have been mentioned, and uh, Autoneuropathy, autonomic neuro neuro neuropathy from any underlying neurological disorder uh, can also cause a, a diarrhea like picture. So, we talk about constipation now. I think for constipation, it is important firstly to exclude intestinal obstruction. So, looking for vomiting, abdominal pain, and obstipation. It's also important to consider the complications of constipation, such as diverticular disease, hemorrhoids, skin fissures, and prolapse. Um, I think uh, the uh, classification-wise, I think of it in terms of uh, gastrointestinal causes, uh, neurological disorders, as well as uh, other systemic disorders. For GI, I think of it in terms of structural or functional, where it's mainly IBS. And structural-wise, um, you can think of it uh, on whether it's luminal, intraluminal, or extraluminal, with the causes elucidated here. Um, in terms of neurology, uh, any form of uh, spinal cord disorders, cordial equina, autonomic dysfunction, can cause constipation. For systemic causes, uh, hypothyroidism is important. Hypercalcemia uh, is also an important cause, and drugs uh, such as opioids, uh, iron supplements would be important to exclude, especially in a station 2 exam, and ileus uh, from electrolyte disturbances uh, should be considered too. So we've come to the end of this presentation. Thank you.